Good afternoon. Welcome. How's the food? Right on. Well, we're going to get started. I'll just give you a little overview. The presentation itself will take maybe eight, ten minutes. Um, if you can hold off on your questions until the end, we're going to leave the rest of the time for questions. So, everybody's ready. Here we go. This is our what you need to know about Windows 7 Office 2010 upgrade for faculty and staff. First of all, I'd like you to meet the project team. Kevin O'Halla in the back there is our sponsor of this project and our chief information officer. And we have Mary Beth Bailey, who is the director of staff development. We have Kurt Minders. We have Dave Sickle, Ian Riley, Paul Siegel, all sitting up here at the front table. When we do the questions and answer session, I will pass this microphone out to folks that want to ask questions. And these gentlemen have a microphone up here to answer your questions. Here's the process. Beginning in January 2012 and through April 2012, we'll begin to we'll process this upgrade. All computers except Macs will be upgraded to Windows 7, Office 2010, GroupWise 8.2, one department at a time. Each person in a department will be notified two weeks prior to their upgrade. On average, upgrades take about one hour. If you have additional software that needs to be added on, it'll take a bit longer. What's changing with this upgrade? Well, all computers except Macs will run Windows 7, Office 2010, GroupWise 8.2. They'll have a standard look and feel to them. Password security will increase. I'll talk about that in another slide. Your computer will boot up faster and it will run more smoothly. But all faculty and staff computers will have protective rights applied. This will help minimize to a great extent any viruses that you may have experienced in the past on your computers but also means that you are unable to install software on your own. Any approved software requests must go through the campus software administrator, this gentleman right here, Ian Riley, uh, through the help desk, of course, and uh, he will ensure that you get the best pricing and it's licensed properly. Here's that uh, policy I was talking about with security on passwords. All passwords must have a minimum of 10 characters, and of those characters, they have to have one of at least one of the following. One uppercase character, one lowercase character, and one number. For example here, I got Y change for with a capital W. Here's one y'all came for, if nothing else besides the sandwiches. This upgrade will erase all the data on your computer. So, that means anything on your hard drive. Now, your stuff on your J and S, that's all on the network, that's all safe. What we'd like to ask you to do is start backing up your GRCC work-related data to your J or S drive. And if you're not sure how to do this, we will show you how. In fact, there's videos coming out very soon, uh, next week, uh, that will explain this process. Now, what's the difference between work-related and non-work-related data? Well, your work-related data is going to be any files or information that's vital to your job and to GRCC as a whole. Non-work related data will be the opposite of that. Any files that are not vital to your function or to GRCC. These are typically files such as photos, personal photos, music, videos, um, personal projects, anything like that. Now how are you going to back up that data? Well, you can use a flash drive, you can use uh, CDs, DVDs, if you have the ability to burn. Uh, we will provide CDs and DVDs for those who don't have them. Or if you have your own flash drive, you want to bring that in. Or if you just need to know where to purchase one, we can help you with that. Although it may seem more convenient to store your personal data on our network, we just simply don't have the space. Identifying your GRCC software. A list of your software that we currently have on file for you will be sent to you two weeks prior to your scheduled upgrade. This information is based on software licensing information we currently have on file for you. Please review and confirm this list of software as soon as you can when you get it. So if there's a problem, if you have any issues with what's on the list, if you don't agree with it, you can get in contact with uh, Ian, who is our campus software administrator, and he'll set up an appointment with you so you can go through and determine what we do have for you that we may have missed something. Computer replacements. Well. There's going to be 400 computers replaced during this upgrade out of the 962 that we do manage for faculty and staff. Of that, that's 154 tablets, 61 laptops, 
and 185 desktops. Those receiving upgrades will be formed of this by the end of the year by Kurt Minders, the IT customer support manager. Now we have time for your questions. The way I'd like to do this, if you have a question, I'll walk over with this microphone. And if you guys got that one all hooked up, I'll bring you a microphone if you can just hold off long enough to ask your question. There you go. How often are our passwords going to be uh, upgraded, changed? They'll be able to answer that question. The uh, passwords will be changed every 120 days. Question. Thank you. With the passwords, can we add like one or two at the end to renew that? Or are we going to have to do a whole new password? Um, the way the system works, yes, you will be able to do that. I would not recommend doing it, but you definitely will be able to do it. <laughs> Who else has a question? If you're still eating, you don't feel comfortable asking a question, I understand. Anybody have any questions about any software they may have? No questions about if you're getting a replacement or not? Ah, I believe that list is kept out on, there's a website for that, isn't there? That's on. If you look at the uh, help desk webpage, the, the list, the computer refresh list, is out on the webpage out there. Just a moment. I, at one time, was under the impression that IT was thinking about moving to a different type of email for the college, say Gmail or something like that, is that still being considered? And if so, why are we upgrading Proofwise? I don't know. <laughs> um, we have set out a survey to investigate the options for our different email enterprise. Uh, the upgrade that's mentioned here is the actual client. So until that has been decided, we do want to keep the current client um, or the client for our current system updated and um, to the newest versions we can. So that's why it's part of the image. Uh, there has been a survey that will have to be discussed at the cabinet, I believe, to discuss um, pros and cons. So, Good question. Any others? Oh, yeah, another one. Oh. What if we need more space on our J drive? <laughs> All right, uh, space on our home drives. Uh, we are limited by the amount of space for our whole enterprise system. We try to accommodate um, valid needs. So we, a request, just like normal, uh, we can still update it. There's some limits that are set, but we don't just do it all because we have um, had in the past where some people have maybe copied up more than what would be the best use for the college. So um, a simple call or a ticket in will get you more space. Any other questions? How are you feeling about this? She's excited. <laughs> Very good. Well, we still have some time. I mean, we, we had a lot more questions at the last session, I guess. Um, do you have any concerns about, you know, not being able to install software on your computers? Did you talk at all about Blackboard? And be, my wife teaches at Western, and she's been told that they they have to move to a new system because Blackboard isn't being supported any longer. Is that something you've heard, or are we going to continue with Blackboard? So we're we're good. They've changed to a completely different system over there. So I was just concerned. 
oath we have, I no, that has not happened. If it was the case, we'd find Eric Cunning on life support somewhere. So I, I think we're all right. Any other questions? Okay. Well, please enjoy your lunch. Um, if you have any questions after the camera's turned off and you don't feel comfortable asking them, we'll record the questions and uh, we'll be happy to talk with you. Again, the project team folks are right here and there's a couple folks in the back and I'm happy to answer any other questions that they may not be able to have answers to. Thank you very much. <laughs>